And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. It happens to be the grand finale of all Super Tuesdays, not only for the uh, 2016 presidential campaign, but probably the greatest grand finale Super Tuesday in the history of the United States considering the fact that I, I highly doubt if there was a campaign year as insane as this one for 2016 <laughs> I think it's the most unorthodox totally crazy campaign season between the insane asylums of the the Republican debates and the uh, the uh, um, voter fraud uh, and, and uh, uh, rigged elections of uh, from the DNC between Hillary Clinton and uh, Bernie Sanders who uh, as, uh, incidentally has re is really surging in California um, I'm surprised that that many people in California were for Hillary. Actually, you know, remember I told you they, they try to, the, the New Jersey, uh, oh yeah, our, the New Jersey primary is uh, this Tuesday also, right? Along with California. New Mexico. New Mexico. Montana and another one. Okay. So, oh yeah, Colorado uh, admitted counting error and some some extra super delegates from Colorado went to Bernie Sanders uh, hopefully more will um, the, the the New Jersey Bernie Sanders people were nagging the hell out of me to do canvassing you know and and they wanted to send me they wanted me to go to uh, Englewood New Jersey and, and it's a good thing um, I didn't do it because uh, <laughs> one of our uh, Facebook group uh, members of, of a few of our, our Facebook groups um, uh, he, he told me that he went to Englewood to help out and the, it, it, he was going door to door in a neighborhood in Englewood, New Jersey in a black neighborhood and they, they were all for Hillary Clinton. Ah, I would have had so many arguments and fights. It's a good thing I didn't go. I, I knew, I knew I would, I would flip out. It's like, unless you're wealthy, a Republican or Hillary Clinton brings absolutely nothing to the table for you if you're a poor, low-income, or middle-class. Now, if you happen to be wealthy, that's a different story. Now, the, the, we're talking about establishment politicians. Now, uh, with a Republican, you, you will get absolutely a nothing, quoting my late grandfather, John. Uh, with Hillary Clinton, you, you will get a few crumbs. But with Bernie Sanders, you will get a, a big, fresh, hot loaf of whole grain bread right out of the oven. A total change. Right out of the... Oh, oh and they're that, really... That change that Obama promised. You, you know there were 6,000 people that were trying... 6,000 extra people that were trying to get in in one of uh, Bernie's recent California rallies? 
6,000 yeah. additional people. And you have to ask yourself then, why does Hillary Clinton have three million more voters than Bernie? Yeah, two or three million. Yeah. Well, that's a bunch of bullshit. Must be. Yeah, the popular the vote. Hillary's claiming to be ahead right. uh, in the popular vote. Yeah, like I really believe that. Because and her rallies do not attract that many people. No, because, because aside from the cheating and aside from the oligarch and the media being on Hillary, Clinton, Hillary Clinton's side, the people in general dislike her. Some of them they don't trust her. Every some of them children. down. Some of them downright hate her. They don't trust her. She has way too much dirt. Her Trump, and her husband. Trump. He calls her a liar. Way too much dirt. Uh, um, he doesn't call Ted a liar anymore. No, Ted's not in the picture. Uh, well, I hear that. Uh, well, he wants to kiss up and make friends to all the. Uh, I hear that a um, a. Um, particular uh, governor that was suing Donald Trump uh, over the Trump University, Trump University scandal yeah. it has uh, dropped the charges since he donated <laughs> he made a donation to Donald Trump's campaign it, 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 it's it's the article said it was illegal the transaction that took place was illegal but I don't know it's uh, it sounds like you know something that the egomaniacal hanky panky yes All hanky -panky. the egomaniacal Donald Trump okay. uh, um, as long as you nod your head and, and agree with everything he says and tell him that you're the greatest entity the universe has ever produced well, he likes he, to hear that he's fine with you he's he, he's he'll be very nice to you uh, but anyway I'm not worried about <laughs> Donald Trump which knows very little about the ways of the world, foreign policy, or, or, or anything really, except for the art of the deal in the real estate game. Uh, they're, uh, they're saying the Republican Party does not have much faith in him and his abilities to be a no, president. There's still, there's, there's still that faction, never Trump. Yeah, oh, let us. Uh, on a sad note, let us have a moment of silence for the recent passing away death of uh, the legend Muhammad Ali. He was 74 years old. So a moment of silence for Muhammad Ali, uh, originally originally known as Cassius Marcellus Clay. And a moment of silence. And our condolences that go out to his family. Seven bells for Muhammad Ali. Cassius and Marcellus are two Roman names. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're 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 Latin in nature. They're Latin in nature. Um, Chisler's Hall of Shame. Let me get it over with. Chisler's Hall of Shame on the sellout corporate whore, a weasel faced MSNBC uh, Chuck Todd for constantly uh, nagging Bernie Sanders in a recent interview to get his supporters to changed their minds and support Hillary Clinton. Con he was push trying to push Bernie Sanders buttons. He was pestering him. You're a weasel face. Drop punk. out, drop out. You're a you wee a drop out. Support Hillary. Right. Talk your supporters into backing Hillary. That weasel face. Uh, he might even be a homo. Ooh. He looks homo-ish. But like, like, um, uh, Uh, CNN's uh, Anderson Cooper, right? Well, he's another weasel. Anyway, regardless, regardless, shame on you, and the biggest shame on you, Chisler's Hall of Shame, 
Shame, shame, shame, shame in honor of uh, Mr. Sean Morrison, who used to be called Sean Hollywood. Okay. The biggest shame on you is for the former liberal moonbeam California Governor Jerry Brown, who decided to sell out and become an establishment politician, an establishment democrat, and he now supports Hillary Clinton, the so-called liberal moonbeam. No wonder he was allowing all that fracking uh, to go on in California and, and the bottling of all the fresh water by the Nestle Corporation during a drought. Who was it said the other day there is no drought? I think it was Trumpy. Trump, you said there is no drought in California. Oh, there's no climate change, there's no drought. Yeah, too. There's no, uh, what about the San Andreas Fault, where the earthquakes come uh, from? Maybe you're going to do away with that, too. <laughs> but, uh, hey, in a delusion, you can do anything you want. Well, it's your cartoon. Yes. It's your cartoon. You can do anything you want. Anything you want. Your characters can be anything they want. You can have Huckleberry Hounds, your... <laughs> Vice Presidential Running May, you can have Elmer Fudd as your Secretary of State, which <laughs> he'll probably do a better job than Hillary Clinton did, you know. But um, yeah, shame on the both of them. Disgust me, disgust me, especially Jerry Brown. I'm very shocked uh, uh, with all these establishment uh, Democrats coming out of the woodwork. But Bernie predicted it, that he's up against the um, establishment Democratic Party. He said it a long time ago. You know, you know, there he knew what was going to happen, and it did. So um, anyway, um, oh gee, what else happened as of late? Uh, oh, uh, on the anonymous Facebook page, there was an article about the first death ray. United States military has a uh, weapons grade laser beam that could be fired from an aircraft. Uh, I, I think Ed, uh, the, the late sleeping prophet Edgar Casey predicted that before our civilization uh, gets in deep shit, deep doo doo, that we will have the death ray again. Uh, the death ray will be used militarily and uh, apparently the first death ray was invented. Uh, so there's some Bible predict that. Yeah, yeah, but but there are many other... We shall bring down fire from heaven. Yeah, but there are many other positive great inventions. You know, science is just amazing. You can't, like George Costanza says on Seinfeld, you can't stop science. You can't stop it. No way, no how. Science just is just so rapidly in, in, improving knowledge, which is also in the Bible. Well, you can stop it like the Amish do. Well, if you choose to or ignore the, it. Or the uh, some of the Arab countries. No, what I mean is if, if you support science. Primitives. If you support science and you allow it to evolve. You need freedom to do that. Right, Unobst unobstructedly support science. It does evolve very fast, not just with computers, with everything. And uh, even God knew that. Though I, that's why he. That's why he made the flood. Could you, humans were getting too smart too fast. Could you Im talking about humans getting too smart too fast? Could you imagine if? everybody went with Nikola Tesla instead of Thomas Edison back then where we would yeah, be yeah have one less bill every month yeah because because the the world would have free, electric bill. free electricity but uh, um, no this look I'm sure there's there are more genius ideas rolling around oh. Nikola Tesla's brain there between could you imagine if if the government wasn't so corrupt and 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 the government told the oligarch and um, at that time JP Morgan and, and Rockefeller to go fuck themselves and and they went with uh, uh, Nikola Tesla and Wilhelm Reich and and they got all those guys together in one uh, 
laboratory and they all worked together and put their heads together. Could you imagine where we would be now? Brother from another mother? We Probably would, World War Three and a We would be putting... No flesh shall be saved alive. We will be very advanced. Aside from religion, we will be very advanced today. You know, if you're a person who is, uh, believes purely in science and who's an atheist like uh, William H. Morrow III, we would, would be like George Jetson, like the Jetson family. We would be living a very convenient life. Uh, that's the uh, premonition, but uh, I don't think that's ever going to come around because you still have this problem of capitalism. Stem and capitalism is not for the mainstream. No. It is only for the few. That have capital. Well, that's how you start out, because you have to have something to invest you, so that you can make yeah. a profit. You see, you see, when when these uh, bubble-headed uh, teabaggers talk about the American dream and how people started with nothing and uh, worked their way all the way to the top, <sighs> in capitalism, you have to have big breaks to get to that point. You have to have capital. Right. One big break. And you're capital. Not, and you're not going to make capital. You're not going to save enough capital to start your own company uh, making a dishwasher uh, 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 money, a dishwasher salary. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, like Ted Cruz says when his father came to the United... I thought they were Canadian. When his father came to the United States to work he worked in a restaurant as a dishwasher, making 50 cents a, a day or I don't know, some ridiculous salary. How much money did he bring to the United States? Because we do not let immigrants in here legally who are poor. No, the, the so fat... he must have had some sort of support. The fastest, and oh, you know, he also said his father was in a, a prison, uh, the Castro regime threw him in prison. Uh -huh. So he must have found you must have had a genie or or some uh, uh, magical entity that that like uh, uh, that beamed him from the prison uh, uh, let him out yeah to north you know north, north. I don't know it, it, it sounds too far-fetched is what I'm trying to say uh, so all these people that supposedly are working for pennies on the dollar. My Uncle Phil told me the same thing. You know, he said when he was a kid there were more farms in north, northeast of New Jersey and he used to pick uh, whatever, he said artichokes, tomatoes, he used to pick produce yeah. from small farms for, for pennies an hour. Uh -huh. You know, all the, all the Republicans all, cl all um, um, try to justify the the uh, the the slave wage the the wage that is not a living wage mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they all try to justify oh when I was a kid I made uh, 25 cents uh, an hour or whatever the hell it was you know so it it's like it's like they're saying there's no excuse if you if you're making Literal, literal peanuts on your job. There's no excuse. I made a dollar twenty on my TV guide. I used to sell TV guides. Dollar twenty. Dollar twenty, nickel a piece. Oh wow! So that's how many people. What do I have? Uh, I bet you could put yourself through college, 20? right? Oh, whoop de do! I mean, uh, you know, at that time, that was that was in the late fifties. So, you know, a dollar was a dollar, but still in all. Yeah, but still. Contrasted to today, a dollar twenty. You're not going to be able to have the collateral to get a big business loan and start a company. Yeah. Not on, not on that. It's not realistic, but, you know, they have this... Um, it means I had like 20, 25 or 24 people that I yeah. delivered to. Yeah. Well, what they're trying to say is uh, don't expect any help from the system. Go to your family. Go to go to your local church. 
And if you don't get help there, just die. Yeah, they're, they're, it, it, it's a bunch of bullshit. Everything your relatives tried to teach you while you were growing up, and everything you learned from your bullshit history books in school, all the way from, from first grade on, was all bullshit. They held many truths back. They held them back, they kept them secrets. They, they twisted some of the stories around, made it more colorful. Of course, uh, all of the uh, people in charge throughout the history of the United States, they were all glorified and good guys. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was a Yet kid... Yet they were slave owners! When I was a kid, even General Custer was a, a portrayed as a good guy in, in the history book. You Could you imagine that? And... Um, And he was a good guy. He just made a big, big boo boo. That's all. Well, he boxed himself in a can, you know, and they came on him real, real fast. Listen, if you're colonizing land that doesn't belong to you, and uh -huh. you're and you're chasing the people that rightfully belong there off their land, and you're stealing it from them, uh -huh. it doesn't make you a good guy. Well, even, they didn't have any deeds. You see. Hey, even even the uh, the inmates that England dumped uh, in, onto the continent of Australia. Uh -huh. Even these people had the mindset of European colonization and they stole f everything from the Aborigines and they enslaved the Aborigines because they saw pictures of Aborigine people in chains, in shackles. So it's like uh, it, there seems to be this a European thing about uh, pillaging and plundering and stealing by force from everyone. And uh, oh, by the way, I was watching the show History, uh, I'm sorry, Mysteries at the Museum last night on the Travel Channel. And they told the story about the fact that the Industrial Revolution started in Manchester, England. So you could in the mills. Huh? In the mills. So you could thank you could thank That was the start of capitalism. You could thank capitalism. You 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 could thank the, the British people in Manchester, England for capitalism. Correct. Right. And the and the whole concept of buying low and selling high. You can thank the British uh, in Manchester for that. And then they brought it to the United States. Well, the East India Company, and that's what they did when they, they, they would go and they would buy the spices and the scraps and then bring it back to Europe, if the ship made it back, and yeah. then they would sell it for high prices over yeah. here. That would give them profits, and then they would reinvest those profits, and that's capitalism. Well, capitalism, the it's mindset... colonialism. The mindset of capitalism, colonialism. Yeah. Uh, uh, the British uh, crown, the royal family, the, that mindset is how the uh, the British uh, sent a spy over to um, China because they didn't like the idea that China was monopolizing the world's tea industry and the person pretended to be an, an Asian nobleman and and made mental notes, ha went on a tour, learned everything mentally of how they pro how to pick tea, how to process it, everything about tea. And he stole some uh, tea plants, which was punishable by death Ugh. if he got caught. And he and he went to England and he, he got on a boat at Shanghai, went to England. He was paid handsomely for what he did. And then the British started growing tea in Sri Lanka, which used to be the island of Ceylon. And, uh, and then the British took over the uh, tea growing industry because they had to have a piece of the action. You know, uh, and it was done. It was an ill-gotten gain, but I guess the capitalists are, are sort of ma Machiavellian. You know, the ends justify the means. 
Um, and, um, and that's that. Uh, oh, I learned what Pico means. Orange Pico. Pico that you see, uh, you read on the box of your teeth. The terms Orange Pico and Pico, as it applies to tea, is only, uh, they're only words used by the, the English in the uh, tea industry, the tea grown in India. It refers to the uh, black tea, which is a completely fermented tea. And what Orange Pico simply means, it is the very top, the tennis is a tea bush, it is the very top tiniest leaves and buds that sit at the top of the tea bush that is called orange pico and pico without being orange pico is the next smallest leaf below that so the first two layers of tiny leaves you don't like that stupid commercial the te tiny little tea leaves of tetley tea well that's considered the finest. Now, I don't know why, because you would think the biggest, the largest leaves at the bottom would be more potent because they're older, but eh, that's that. I, I, you know, a little history, a little tip from James P. Madonna, you know. Uh, anyway, um, everything we discuss politically is part of our series Capitalism in a Conch Shell. There's the conch. And, um, and let me add that yeah. in America, yeah. capitalist, capitalism is associated with the Christian religion. Oh, yeah. And therefore... Well, the, the so-called Christian religion. Therefore, it is associated in the minds of most people with mom apple pie and chevrolet well you wouldn't and if you say anything derogatory about capitalism which we do you're like burning the flag okay so why why what makes people think the american way is necessarily good and socialism is should be demonized because well, well, because they associate capitalism with religion well, therefore, when we had the Cold War, it was those godless communists and us religious capitalists. Well, the Cold War, the, the Soviet Union were totalitarian. That's to correct. Totalitarianism. Now, uh, since uh, uh, since they feel God is part of capitalism, I guess all those verses in the Bible about the rich giving to the poor and helping the poor don't yeah, count. And the one about uh, as the nail sticketh between two stones, so does sin stick to buying and buying and selling. So does sin Communist stick propaganda. to buying and selling. Yeah, they'll call it commie propaganda. That's right. Yeah. Now, they don't teach by facts. They don't teach by reading the dictionary's definition of all these words. Uh, socialism, capitalism, communism. No, no, no. I think it's based on emotion because a Republican, instead of giving facts and teaching, he'll say, Pinko commie! He's a commie! He's a pinko! He, like, he'll, he'll raise his voice and point his finger. Commie! Pinko! So people associate the emotion with the demonization and respond to that yes the wrong the wrong demonization mm -hmm. of that word the wrong perception now since only the rich benefit by the so-called American dream and only the rich benefit by capitalism then uh, the the American dream of being available to everyone is a lie of course it is Upward mobility is limited in the United States. Isn't it amazing how so few people actually know that their history books were a bunch of bull, bull, bullshit? That, isn't it amazing how so many people just, um, just watch the mainstream media and believe everything the mainstream media says and don't get their news from any other source? Most of our most of our textbooks and etc. come out of Texas, and they are heavily censored Isn't because people don't like certain things. 
in history that occurred. They, they censor what really occurred in the uh, Depression because they feel that they're against capitalism. Well, it was the Republican administration that uh, caused the Great Depression. And, and it was, it, it was the, the Great Depression uh, was caused by um, the country being run by uh, the oligarch from the Industrial uh, Revolution. That's what you got. But you got propaganda. The banks went wild, the, 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 the big boys and girls went wild, and they soaked us. Just like you, you have on your newsletter, newsletter censored, uh, uh, the words uh, fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. propaganda. Conservative propaganda. Yeah. And that's what it is. That's correct. That's what it is, you know. Conservative propaganda. Propaganda serves as truth. There are, and there are people who believe it hook, line, and sinker, and then there are the uh, independent, critical, free thinkers with open minds, the true progressive warriors that are way ahead of the propaganda. They're wise to it. But uh, then there are many, like poor people who vote Republican or, or poor minorities that um, uh, support Hillary Clinton that have no idea, they have no, there's no logical reason why they're supporting them, you know? Because exactly, well, that, that, it, it, it. in that contrast between Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton, we see that the people, they want change, they want a better life, they want this, but only Bernie is offering those things. Hillary Clinton is not, and neither is Trumpy. Yeah, there's no they, they between Trump and Hillary. They want to keep everything privatized. Yes, things as they are, including education and health care, which means you you have to pay out of pocket. And uh, you know, uh, if you're low income or poor, there is no pay out of pocket. So I don't understand how a low income minority person. And despite the fact that Hillary uh, was campaigning for Republican uh, Barry Goldwater when um, Bernie Sanders was working hard for the uh, civil rights movement. Because they, she's on video saying that she has conservative Republican principles. Yeah, she's the best okay. Republican the Democratic exactly. Party ever had. Bernie, Bernie Sanders was marching with Martin Luther King. Uh, Hillary Clinton was a young Republican. Yeah. I just don't understand how she, her and her husband passed themselves off as, uh, as liberals. It's beyond me. I propaganda. Mean, you know. Propaganda uh, serving as truth. And uh, she, she didn't have compassion for the poor back when she was a lawyer in uh, Arkansas, <laughs> from what I understand, you know. Uh, well, yeah, she, with that case with the rape, I mean, she blamed the victim, the 12-year-old victim. Yeah, she Hillary was a, a typical follow-the-money trail person, professional. Oh, they both were. You know, Clinton, uh, Clinton. Look at that, last year or whatever the hell it was, they made $111 million. I feel your pain. I feel your pain. You know the only pain he feels, don't you, is if he scratches himself when he pulls out his wallet. From his pocket. You know, even, even, even the, uh, the, the <laughs> I don't know how the man looks at himself in the mirror, but Pat Robertson oh, has geez. a lot of dirt in his, I, backyard. I said last night. He's not. He's got a lot he of shit going on. He said he had a dream that God told him about Trump. Right? I said, yeah. I said it was the devil in the dream. Yeah, but he, Pat Robertson, is a, a, a businessman himself. And, oh uh, no, kidding! He's got a diamond mine. And he uses uh, the 
cheapest labor he can possibly find. How about those poor find. children that he supposedly supports in this far off uh, land, wherever yeah, sure. the hell it is? You know? Yeah, yeah, Never Never Land. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Peter Pan and his uh, buddies. Peter Popoff. Peter Popoff. <laughs> And the miracle spring water. Ah, you know, I'm yeah. gonna burn the cancer from your body. Uh, look it up on YouTube. You'll be uh, hysterical. Anyway, let us sink our teeth into these readings. Let me see how long-winded we were. We didn't have that many chiselers, hall of shame inductees. Eh. Yeah, we were long-winded. But it's uh. You know, the creme de la creme, the uh, the grand finale of Super Tuesdays. To the letter writer who threatens to write in Bernie Sanders on the ballot in November, that's another vote for Donald Trump, thank you. <laughs> how can that be? If all the, uh, the Bernie supporters are writing them in, how can that be a vote for Trump? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's right. You're right about that. Yeah. The letter brings irresponsibility into a new dimension. Has the writer learned nothing? In the 2000 election, many people like her also decided that the purity of their souls trumped making a choice. Al Gore wasn't good enough for them. So they voted for Ralph Nader. The result was that the vote for Nader cost Gore Florida and New Hampshire, uh, uh, allowing a runaway Supreme Court to designate George W. Bush the winner. So they're blaming, yeah, they're blaming Ralph Nader running in the Green Party for his, his lousy 270,000 votes. Yes. Those who voted for Nader probably felt very virtuous, but they were totally oblivious to the consequences for the country. It resulted in war in Iraq, the worst recession since the Great Depression, and enormous setbacks in the need to slow climate change, among other consequences. Well, absentee ballots weren't even counted for uh, Florida, Florida uh, absentee no, ballots. No, the Supreme votes. Court stopped them from recounting. They also didn't the wait for they didn't wait for the inner uh, city vote for Cleveland, Ohio, to come in. You know, I mean, they, I mean the they, Supreme they, Court uh, back then uh, admitted the obvious: if we allowed the recount, it would hurt George W. Bush. No kidding. Good. They would have lost. Good, because Al Gore had the popular vote, you know. And I don't know. They're, they're whining about these. These are these are obvious uh, people that are spellbound by Hillary Clinton for some reason. No, the problem is they they, they just want this two-party system. Get into the two-party system or shut your mouth. They got it embedded in their exactly. brain, the two-party system, yes. because these are the same people that believe only in what they were told growing up. Like that idiot, when I was, I used to go to Pub 46, what the hell is his name, Phil Coniglio. He wouldn't do a, a anti-Christmas, anti anti-Santa Claus video with me because he says, his his relatives will get mad that he wouldn't be a good Catholic. What do you? What the hell does being a good or bad Catholic have to do with Santa Claus? You know what I mean? They 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 they're brought up yep. with whatever they were told. Oh, God is this uh, this old man with a long white hair and a white beard and a white robe sitting on top of a cloud. Yeah. That that's what the. When I used to go to Sunday school, Catholic Sunday school, they had pictures of God. That's what he looked like. He was on a cloud. He was sitting on a cloud. <clears throat> oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess I guess it was a very, it was comfortable like, um, 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 uh, what do you call uh, poly, uh, the foam mattress. Yeah, 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 my, yeah, your memory foam. Memory foam. <laughs> no, but you know, just like they had everybody. 
celibate in the Bible, and, and saints had supernatural powers after they died. If they were canonized as saints, they were like the demigods. They made all these canonized saints demigods, and you could pray to them and all that. And yeah. So these people grew up with the two-party system, mm -hmm. to get to the point. And uh, whatever they grew up with, whatever they heard from their stupid relatives and from mainstream media and from their bullshit history books, this is how they are as adults. These are not independent, free, critical thinkers. No. I'm sorry, I went off on a, a This writer, too, probably wants to feel virtuous by not being attached to any party. But life is about choices. What counts is not party loyalty, but allegiance to country, allegiance to humankind. Whatever disaster Bush was for the country and the world, Donald Trump would be far worse. If the writer wants to smugly sit on the sidelines while the world burns, that is her choice, but she must understand that her free feel-good choice, if replicated by others, could have dire consequences for our country and indeed the world. My loyalty is to the good of the planet, the planet Earth. My devotion is to the planet Earth and the good, decent people that are on it. Not the evil scumbags, but the good people that are on it, and the planet, and its creatures. That's it. I don't wave any flag. Finding much of what he says appealing, I have been gratified at Bernie Sanders' success. However, the direction he now seems to be taking is unsettling. His original idealism has become rather tarnished. In fact, he begins to look almost as cynical as Donald Trump. Yeah, I'm, I'm cynical too of uh, all the opposition that's going against Bernie Sanders. He joined the Democratic Party solely to have a chance at the nomination. Yeah. Now he spends much of his time denigrating the very same party that allowed him his coveted opportunity. Here we go again. The party. Save the party. Save the Democratic Party. The two-party system. Save establishment politics. Again, this idiot. Oh, oh, you need my shillelagh upside your skull. Further, comparisons with Trump are obvious. Both arrived at the campaigning process without any real link to a specific party. Both have been fulsome in their negative comments about their adopted parties, and both describe the process as rape. They have each surrounded themselves with die-hard supporters who apparently care about nothing other than their candidate winning. They thrive on the adulation surrounding them and allow their supporters to conduct themselves in a manner that is unseemly and deplorable. If, this, if his true concern were the American people, Sanders would gracefully bow out of the race. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, this person must really want to go down on Hillary. He has no chance to win. Ah, no chance. No chance in hell. And his insistence on persisting greatly increases Trump's prospects for winning the presidency. Yeah, let, let the wicked witch win. Yeah. yeah. So, it would seem that self-aggrandizement is more important than the public's fate for the next four years. Is this, this person is like the old Tokyo Rose, trying to bring the morale down of uh, the, um, what, do you, what do you call, um, of the Bernie, 
uh, Bernie Kratz or Bernie Bros. Bring down the morale. Is this a woman or a man? A man. Uh, yeah, so he's a male version. Trump simply aspires to more self-glory. Sanders makes his ambitions by seeking to be the revered leader of a new American revolution. Grassroots revolution. Trump wants to be a god. Sanders wants to be a saint. Yeah, that's true. Trump wants to be a god. You're very right. You're very right. However, America does not need a revolution or a god or a saint. It needs only intelligent progress and reform. How are you going to get reform with Hillary Clinton? Intel intelligent progress and reform with Hillary Clinton? She's in there bed. There is no reform in her, pa she, pa she, in her platform. She, she's in bed with the oligarch, with Wall Street. She owes big favors. She takes big money. She takes bribes to the two, two, three thousand, two to three hundred all. I mean, two to three hundred thousand dollars paid speeches. What is with this person? Is 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 delusional? Is twelve dollars an hour minimum wage reforming? No. Or it's fifteen. You you're lucky if your no your nostrils are above water by the time we get fifteen, <laughs> and and this person. It is supporting Hillary that doesn't is not in a hurry to give you a living wage that you deserve that you need doesn't want to give you uh, a free education university right. education so where's the reform in her policy and health care for all and you just named three three reform issues policies and she's on she's doesn't support any of Does she want to overturn Citizens United? No. How does she feel about the uh, 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 North American Free Trade Agreement? She was for it, and since everybody else went against it, now she's against it. Yeah, okay. TPP? Yeah. But she, she bounces back and forth. Well, she did it with NAFTA. She said she was uh, uh, against NAFTA from the start. She was not. And and she's on video, right? As, as, as stating that. And and the Iraq War, she was in favor of the Iraq War, right? Well, she just wanted to give the vote to George W. Bush. Show him, show him what a nice uh, 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 supporter she was. Good American. You see, an establishment politician, especially an evil, greedy one, is a is. A follow the money trail politician. They all are. I mean, especially Hillary. How much money does Hillary need to be content? For God's sakes, or any How of them. How much more do the WalMarts need? The Waltons, yeah. I mean, it, well, well, the WalMarts the, too. The cook. Well, that that's the family. Yeah, that, that's the family. That's the family that owns Walmart. The Walton Waltons, family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, Koch yeah. brothers. How much money the do, the, do the Cokies need? Yeah. The Rothschilds, the um, the uh, what's that that uh, Palooka's name? George Soros. Uh, how much money does he need? Uh, Warren Buffett. The the uh, the, San, uh, the uh, what do you call it? the Republican Congress and Senate? Some of them are multi-millionaires. You just reminded me of something I like to get on here real quick. Or billionaires. Uh, everyone is. Paul Ryan said he's going to vote for Trump. So now everybody's saying he endorsed Trump. No, he did not. He said he was going to vote for him. That is not an endorsement. Now let's get these things right, uh, you know, accurate. It's the same thing with the word radical. They keep using it and, 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 and have explained no. that it does not mean what they think it means. Extremism is means what they what they is the right. correct word. Right. So what you're saying is Paul Ryan is is um is settling for Trump. He's tolerating Trump. He's settling for the le for in his opinion the lesser of two evils. In his opinion, that's correct. Okay, it's not an endorsement. No, an endorsement is like me and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman supporting Hill, uh, Bernie Sanders. 
this is an endorsement because our, our, our hearts and minds and work on his behalf and souls are working and working in behalf of campaigning for him yeah. we are putting uh, everything that we can on the line on the line into supporting him so we but, that's an endorsement right but Paul Ryan has to be very careful because he wants to run for president yeah. So if Trump screws up and fucks up, yeah, you know what I mean. Mitt Romney and, and, and they, well, Paul Ryan, he will endorse uh, Trump. Mitt Romney uh, is you know wait, what to happen. Mitt Romney is waiting in the wings in case something happens. Mitt Romney is, is, is he ain't going nowhere. He's a has been and never was. Okay. Yeah, well, they all they all have selfish uh, ambitions and agendas. Uh, uh, all yeah, but he's an evil man because yeah. he doesn't like the forty-seven percent who are poor. Okay. No, well, they, 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 the only, the only good thing he about came out and said it. to to a conservative uh, to to forget. Well, let's forget about parties and and labels. Let's just talk about establishment capitalist politicians, uh -huh. two-party system. Establishment capitalist politicians, Dem Democrat or Republican, doesn't matter. They all have selfish, greedy agendas. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only good thing about the poor in their eyes is that the poor can be enslaved. That's what they're hoping on. Or die. It's be my slave or die. You know, uh, die somewhere where I don't have to pick you up off the street. Yeah, die, die, go in the woods and die, so you yeah. just... Let uh, your body rot out in the woods. Yeah, yeah, so so Mother Nature yeah, you consumes go. your corpse. Yeah, let the bear come around. And, and we don't have to pay to bury you. There you go. Where there my, you go. What did my grandfather used to call a uh, uh, um, potter's field? Potter's field, yeah. The, uh, what, uh, pop they, them in there. Are they unmarked graves? Absolutely. What, are they going to put a gravestone on your grave? Not even a wooden cross? Maybe a wooden cross, I don't know. What about a piece of cardboard with a, with a Sharpie marker that has your name on it? That'll wash out in the first rain. <laughs> you know, um, I, you know, in... Uh, they would prefer to just throw you into a mass grave like the, like uh, Hitler did. You know, the, the uh, uh, what Veronica used to tell me in uh, Colombia is that the people at the cemetery, they have to literally glue artificial flowers to the uh, headstones because people would steal real flowers and real plants. Now, do you see how petty people are in third world countries? Well, hey, they're poor. And you feel sorry for the poor. I feel sorry for the poor if they're not if they're not a criminal element. Now, the Bible says if you steal bread because you are starving. It's not a criminal element. Well, you're surviving. Exactly. You're surviving. And you're supposed to be able to go to uh, the field and gather your food that you need at that moment from the harvest that's left over from the four sides of the field. See? Yeah. God takes care of the poor. He knows yeah. they're there. As Jesus said, the poor will always be with us. Well, there's a reason for that, you know? But they won't be in the millennium. Right. So Correct. Listen, you people out there that think you're progressive warriors, but you're not. You're, all, you're, you're only progressive warriors if you go public with your opinion. If you, if you just tell me things in private and are too cowardly to go public with your opinions, then you're not a progressive warrior. Somebody like Evelyn Pringle who I salute, is a progressive warrior. You see? All right? She really goes public. A matter of fact, she has a radio program now on the Progressive Radio Network. All right? A progressive warrior goes public and grabs the bull by the horns. Um, not somebody who keeps it private and keeps it on their little precious little baby Facebook profile. Oh, so I hope you registered to vote. You jabronis, I hope you vote. 
as soon as you can on this this Tuesday and video record your voting yes with your smartphones or whatever yes and if there's any uh, shenanigans. Uh, shenanigans going on any anything suspicious put it on YouTube put it on YouTube but announce the location and report it to the county clerk but announce the location okay we're gonna go to lunch yeah. and you'll be joined by our uh, commercial voiceover artist William Hamilton Morrow the third with promo as well as how to defeat a conservative Bible verses just simply hit pause and read them and learn them and you'll see that Christianity is not conservative right-wing in any way shape or form This is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye bye. Okay, we're back. Thank you very much, William Hamilton Morrow the Third, for doing promo. Oh, now we are back with progressive discussions for the balance of this show. This happens to be um, the grand finale Super Tuesday show. Uh, we're talking about the the last 2000, 2016 uh, presidential campaign primaries is this Tuesday. So it's the uh, two Super Tuesday of all Super Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. The grand finale. And our state of New Jersey happens to be one of them. So do the right thing. Um, oh, uh, on the um, the Facebook page, I think it's called Working Families for New Jersey, something of that nature. I posted the uh, article and photograph of uh, a Republican from Sussex County, New Jersey, that uh, while, while they were going uh, over the uh, the minimum wage for New Jersey, he was playing solitaire oh, yeah. on his, his uh, tablet or tablet, whatever. Yeah. And then smartphone. 
yeah, he wasn't paying attention. He was playing solitaire, and then he voted no against. Wow, well, yeah. He's a Republican, of course. Against, what would we expect? Against raising the minimum wage. Yeah. So I just thought they would get a kick out of that. It has a photo of him playing solitaire. I saw it. They're not crazy about Chris Christie on all these um, New Jersey uh, web pages either, but they sure as hell re-elected him, didn't they? Yes, they did. Talk about establishment of uh, Democrats. Ah, you forget about saving the Democratic Party. Forget it. It's the they're just two sides of the same coin. They're all corrupt. As you can see, this is a very grassroots revolution type of show. We're not in a state-of-the-art studio with all kinds of fancy shit around this, like, like sink. From the Young Turks has, you know, or we, don't, Fox we don't have the budget, we are we don't have the budget that all these other people have, mm -hmm. so it's very grassroots looking, not as bad as Hee Haw, you know, remember K-O-R-N, remember they had the eight cartons in the back, K-O-R-N News, K-O-R, Corn, K-O-R-N News, we're not that bad. <laughs> You know, I couldn't do that with a straight face. Have eight cartons behind me, but where are we You now? made another and you were gone. Yeah, it was, um, uh, uh, uh damn, I used to, I, I used to know every word to that song. <laughs> It'll come to me. But anyway, let's sink our teeth into these readings. Oh, man. Um. Where, oh where, where are you, you tonight? tonight? Why did you leave me here all alone? I searched the world over and I thought I found true love. You, you made another and you was gone. gone. <laughs> Replying to... Seven bells. The sanctimonious pontificators wailing about... Bernie Sanders supporters writing him in. Is that Wailing Jennings? I have this to say. Democracy isn't about playing the odds or voting for one candidate to keep another from winning. Democracy is choosing the person you believe will best promote your views. Yeah, that, in other words, they're saying, vote for those that have your best interests. Yeah. Well, that's logical. Yeah. Makes sense, common sense. I support Sanders because I agree with his positions on money, in politics, affordable higher education, climate change, immigration, income inequality, and the like. I even like Bernie Sanders' take on foreign policy, like uh, why is the United States paying for the war on terror over there in the Middle East by itself, um, uh, the, um, the, the ramifications of what would happen if you topple a dictator, you know, uh, would, would it make the, uh, the country unstable, what will, what will, what will replace the regime. You know, these are all common sense foreign policy uh, stances. And uh, just, it's just like everything Bernie Sanders says is just a gem. Why should I not cast my precious vote for a candidate I believe in? Even if I have to write him in. Oh, I like, I like this reading. Hopefully, when the Democratic National Committee and the superdelegates realize that Sanders, not Hillary Clinton, is the best to beat Donald Trump in the general election. Very true. 
They will switch their allegiance, and writing him in will not be needed. To those who say Sanders is impractical, I can and cannot attain his vision of America. I give you Robert F. Kennedy, who said the following. I, uh, I, I, I dream things that uh, never were, and I ask why not. Therefore, I proudly join Sanders' <coughs> political revolution, and I will write him in. Ara, ara. If necessary. Ara, ara, That's a good ara. impersonation. I think Bernie Sanders better pick himself up a vice presidential running mate, being that this is the last hurrah of primaries. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? He, I think he can use the help to reinforce his campaign with a good choice for VP. Imagine a candidate holding a news conference and calling out the mainstream media as compliant when it comes to Democrats and untrustworthy when it comes to Republicans. The contentious atmosphere would be standard in a Donald Trump administration as he would not expect the media to give the cover for him like they have given President Obama the last eight years. In comparison, Hillary Clinton has not had press conferences of late. What are she and her handlers afraid of? Might we see the real? unscripted Clinton unable to tell the truth when answering non-softball questions about the Clinton Family Foundation? Its lack of transparency, donations to vets, and Benghazi emails. Here we go again. <coughs> The disparity of the news coverage in this election cycle has become nothing but scandalous. On Wednesday, Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump both held rallies in California at approximately the same time, 30 miles away. The Sanders rally in Davis, a small city of 100,000 including college students drew 10,000 supporters. In 105 degree heat. Wow. Yeah, but it's a dry heat though. Trump's rally in Sacramento was attended by fewer than 4,000. Sacramento is the capital of California with a population of 500,000. Oh, gee. By my calculations, Sanders had a much better turnout than Trump did. I think every rally, you would see Sanders blowing away the competition. I watched all three major cable news outlets that night. Guess whose rally received the most coverage? Trump's. Trump's. Yeah. Or Hillary. The oh, media we'll is responsible Trump. for letting the evil genie escape the bottle. Yeah, they don't want you to see, the media doesn't want you to see the, the tens of thousands that show up at Bernie Sanders rallies. Now, it's become too late to shove it back in. media, no matter how much you expose the media, you'll, you will only see such exposure on the internet. You'll never see it on the media because the media will not allow the media to be exposed and, and demonized, scandalized, whatever, you know, so it's like... Um, they, they know they're corporate whores. They don't want you to know it. 
<clears throat> the Libertarian Party again nominated former New Mexico Governor Gary Johnson. Yeah, I know of him. As its presidential candidate on Sunday. Believing he can challenge the presumptive Republican nominee Donald Trump and Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton. Well, he will take votes away from everybody, everybody else. Because of their poor showing in popularity polls. Johnson, 63, won the nomination on the second ballot at the party's convention in Orlando, Florida, defeating Austin Peterson the founder of the Libertarian Republic magazine. Yeah, their Libertarians are right-wing in some cases and what would you say, moderate in others? They are social liberals. Social liberals. And uh, conservative. Fiscally? Fiscally. The delegates selected former Massachusetts Governor William Weld to be his vice presidential running mate. There's, there's nothing wrong with picking a VP early. Johnson, the party's nominee in 2012, told the delegates during his acceptance speech that his job will be to get the libertarian platform before the voters at a level the party has not seen. I am fiscally conservative in spades and I am socially liberal in spades. Just like you said before. I would cut back on military interventions that have the unintended consequence of making us less safe in the world. Not to mention sticking our nose where it doesn't belong. For Johnson to make a serious run this year, he needs to qualify for the presidential debates. To do that, he must have average 15% in five recognized polls. He hopes that his doable that it is doable because Trump and Clinton are both seen unfavorably by a majority of voters. Oh, that's without a doubt, yeah. Uh, he, he was on Jesse Ventura's Off the Grid program more than once, I believe. Johnson will also need to overcome a huge financial disadvantage. Governor of New Mexico, John, Gary Johnson is his first. Gary Johnson. Gary Johnson. Yeah. All right. Um, 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 um. Well, I, I really, um, I really uh, do not like Bernie Sanders' campaign manager because. Listen, if you look up the video on YouTube where Bernie Sanders is tearing Alan Greenspan a new asshole, that's how Bernie Sanders should have debated Hillary Clinton. But it never happened. It never happened. He was way too nice to her. You know, um, he was way too nice to uh, Chuck Todd. So, this... Uh, ultra-liberal pacifist that is maybe afraid that somebody would call him a misogynist if he aggressively deba debated Hillary Clinton? Who knows? I'm only guessing. Or a dictator socialist. Well, not if you're... Okay. Uh, well, politics is... Uh, po political co um, campaigns. Uh, no one said that they were you know, uh, tiptoeing through the tulips. Tiptoeing through the tulips. 
You know, you have to, and, and, and as long as he doesn't lie about Hillary, you could go after her. Hey, she has a lot of dirt to uh, uncover, you know? A lot of proven uh, negativities that she has committed. House Speaker Paul Ryan, and here's that word you used in, in, inaccurately, endorsed Donald Trump's bid for president on Thursday. Again, I will repeat, he did not endorse him. He said he will vote for him. They still have problems and uh, no meeting of the mind. Well, the whole Republican Party has a problem with Trump. Okay. It's, that's like that's like calling G. W. Bush uh, 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 the elected president. You know, which <laughs> he, he wasn't. White House nominee and the nation's top Republican in office is all right. I had friends wishing I wouldn't support him. I had friends wishing I would. Ryan said in an interview with the Associated Press. I really didn't feel any pressure other than my goal is to make sure that we're unified so that we're at full strength in the fall so we can win the election. Yeah, you can win and you could uh, enslave the poor and kill off the rest. Huh? The Wisconsin Republicans announced made in a newspaper column published in his Wisconsin hometown marks a significant step for a Republican Party trying to come together ahead of a general election matchup against likely Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's something really to look forward to. Republican controlled Washington, where the only thing your food stamps would buy is probably rice and beans. Everything else would have to come out of your pocket. And Ryan made clear... Maybe no food stamps at all. Well, Paul Ryan wants that. They, they don't even he want... He wants your Social Security, too. He wants to steal your Social Security, and they, they probably don't want any welfare at all for anybody. Not Paul Ryan doesn't. How do you, how do you, uh... He constantly makes his budgets that that's where you cut But how do you make ends meet? You go to work for some corporation... Work? ...and make them rich. Yeah. That's what you do. And, and many people have done just that. And... The people that have spent their whole lives working for one company, uh... You know what? When you have a job working for somebody else, Naturally, you're helping them get rich. Rich. I have no idea what fell. That thing, you're top to the thermostat. Oh. I mean, your thermostat. Oh, oh the, uh, the cup. <laughs> your thermostat. My, my, my chalice. Yeah, my, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the holy grail. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, oh, a, 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 what the fuck was I saying? <laughs> Making someone else rich. All right, when you work for somebody else, you are naturally making himself rich because they have to, for the salary they pay you, like you explained to me, they have to be making a lot more money off of you as yeah. an employee. Yeah. And then they write you off anyway as uh, the cost of labor is tax deductible. But is your salary where is your salary in comparison to the cost of living if your salary is here and the cost of living is up here then you're not ahead of the game at all and you never will be and, and because it's rigged to be that way yeah, right? bingo! let me get my holy grail it's all rigged there, there it is and ryan made clear oh. He had Clinton on his mind when he decided to join the ranks of Republicans who have slowly come around to backing Trump. Yeah. The brash billionaire. Ah, ah. Few expected to emerge as the party's nominee. Ah, 
Yeah, hey, Megan Kelly, she was bleeding from all holes. <laughs> so what? She was bleeding from all holes. Poor, this poor girl. To me, is about saving the country and preventing a third progressive liberal term, which is what a Clinton presidency would do, Ryan said. What? Clinton? Liberal? They use that that uh, that perception every time against any Democrat is a liberal. Well, because they they only want spending for the military budget <laughs> and, and to stuff in their pockets, of course. And to give subsidies to the corporations. Let them drill on our land for free. Let them cut down our trees. Now what is, what is this crap that I heard from a relative about, I'm just thinking of hard about this, about Social Security only only being designed to supplement an, a, an, old, an old person's income. A retired, Impossible, because at that time... Retired person. It was, it was designed as the, the sole income for people who were starving! Because how many the elderly were starving. How many retired senior citizens have a pension, a pension, an adequate pension, or a, a large retirement nest egg that they save? Like, like, there's not that many people. In order to be a a retired um, a senior citizen that is self-sufficient financially. You have to be have been a younger person in the United States that was earning a high salary in and order put to put away a bunch in savings or be a successful self-employed person throughout life in order to be that senior citizen that's retired and well off. Mm -hmm. No. So the percentage the of the people were... they're talking about. The elderly were starving. Just in people were in the regular people were in bread lines, soup yeah. kitchens. But what what my relative was getting at was they were she was assuming that Social Security is an entitlement. She was treating it like anything that somebody gets from the government. Republicans treat it like an entitlement. They're all entitlements, not realizing that people pay into it. Not the subsidies of corporations. They're not entitlements. Oh, oh, they don't wealth, call them that. Welfare, no, no, no. They don't call them that, no, sir. Even even, uh, uh, even unemployment insurance is, is um, um, I mean, money was put into it. That is correct. By and workers. It, and right? you pay taxes on it. Ain't that How about funny? That? Isn't that something? You pay taxes on two thirds of your salary when you're unemployed. Huh? Unbelievable. The cost. Unbelievable. The cost of labor is all tax deductible. And listen to this. You, because people are always making it sound like you know you're getting a big handout. You know. Uh, if you're if you can't pay off your credit card mm. and it gets to the point where you have these uh, these uh, wolves uh, uh, trying to go for your throat I mean the bill collectors they you know the, the credit card company turns it over to a collection agency and they're calling your house <laughs> day and night constantly from er early in the morning to I think 8 or 9 p.m. is the mm. cutoff okay now you eventually unless you if you if you send them a letter of cease a cease and desist letter legally they stop but eventually you you will receive a letter from the credit card uh, bank credit card company that they uh, are giving up in in pursuing this money that is owed to them and that's it. Null and void, right? I mean, they don't, they're not collecting anymore. Which probably means they're writing it off on their taxes. 
so I got one of the banks to admit, yeah, yeah, well, yeah we're eventually down the road, we write it off. Ah, okay. So after all the aggravation of the bill collectors and all that crap, they write it off anyway. So I don't get all the whining and bitching and moaning that the rich do. I really don't. Trump celebrated the endorsement on his favorite venue, Twitter. So great to have the endorsement and support of Paul Ryan. We will both be working very hard to make America great again. Some GOP leaders say they won't support Trump, including the 2012 Republican presidential nominee Mitt Romney, who tapped Ryan as his running mates four years ago. A day earlier, Romney signaled that he might support a possible third-party candidate instead of Trump. I'm telling you, this campaign year is going to be very interesting. Ryan himself acknowledged that he continues to have concerns with Trump's combative style, but said that after a series of conversations with Trump, he is confident, he and the House Republicans, that he leads as Speaker will be able to work with Trump as President on their agenda. I wonder if Chris Christie became buddies with him. They both have a similar personality. We obviously have a different kind of style and tone, that's very clear. Anyone who knows anything about us knows that, Ryan said. But what really ultimately matters is how best can we make sure these principles and policies get enacted in 2017. I, I can't see Donald Trump, just like with Chris Christie, I can't see them being uh, internationally diplomatic. <laughs> and negotiating anything. They're, 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 he's, they're such fascist dictators. As the GOP's Never Trump movement struggled to identify a viable alternative, many believed it was only a matter of time before Ryan fell in line. The endorsement, he said, was not the product of any deal with the billionaire developer, but a decision based on an understanding of our mutually agreed upon principles. Ryan said he specifically wanted to go over Trump's approach to executive power, judicial appointments, and his position on abortion. Oh, brother, here we go. Those conversations took some time. I feel much more comfortable that he's in the same page with us. Most importantly, it is obvious that Hillary Clinton is not. Hey, though, I don't believe they really care about a fertilized egg. I just think they don't, they don't want to put money into Planned Parenthood. They want to cut off Planned Parenthood completely. Well, that they do. That's what it is. Ryan ended a week-long standoff with Trump minutes before the his support for the New York billionaire in a column published online by the Jamesville Gazette. He had shocked the political world last month by declining to endorse Trump. Once the real estate mogul became the last major Republican presidential contender in the race. The pair spoke privately in a series of Washington meetings last month, and their staff stayed in touch. Ryan said he made the decision to formally endorse Trump earlier in the week. 
All right, you got something for one a last reading for the show? Eh, let's do something. Uh, let's do something, you know, off the cuff. All right. I'm in love with my boyfriend. Oh, here we go. I can imagine what he looks like. And we are about to move to a huge college town. A in college. We've been dating for two years. I want him to be my husband. But at the same time, I want to live life. I'm not yet even 21. Then why does she want to get married? If she wants to live, if she wants to live life, you don't want to get married. I have an experienced life. Especially the man. Forget it. He won't be able to have a life. I want to go out to a bar or a club and dance with whoever I want. Oh, then don't get married. Maybe even hook up. Oh, forget it. Don't get married, man. Don't get married. This is a... She's not even 21 yet? If it were come, were to come to that. No. Uh, I want to dance. I want to hook up. <laughs> If, if it were to come to that, C-U-M. Hey, the levity bells finally were rang today. C-U-M. I have never had a one night stand and I don't think I would, but if it came down to it, who knows? She wants to get reamed. She wants the old shillelagh. She wants to play hide the salami, eh? I don't want to hurt him. But I want him to be happy. <laughs> He's happy with me and I'm happy with him. What do I do? Very contradictory here. How do I tell him I like sexual freedom? How do you tell him? With your mouth. <laughs> oh, then he'll have... <laughs> He'll have sexual fear. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it doesn't work one way. It works both ways. Uh, you know, he... Uh, put she, that mouth to good use. She wants day. to play hide the salami uh, with whoever. And he's going to uh, want uh, the old bearded cherry stone clam with whoever. Boomtang. Uh, this is Dear Abby's answer. They're Explain too. to me, to your boyfriend, exactly the way you have described it to me. And if he is like 99% of the men on this planet, your problem will be solved. He would say, oh, I could bang other chicks? Okay, no problem. Yeah. That's it? I mean, it's not cut and dry. I mean, it's, I don't know. It, 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 first of all, like a friend of mine said a long time ago, you need money to date. Things are expensive now. Well, let's, another way, let's understand something. You know. She hasn't, according to her, she hasn't had sex. Oh, she, oh, she, no? No. Oh, how ugly is this girl? She wants girl? sexual freedom, but she hasn't had sex. She didn't say she had sex with her boyfriend. With yeah. her boyfriend? Yeah. She didn't say she was a virgin. No, no. She hasn't had sex. Well, how long have they been dating again? Two years. What the hell? I'm sure he has g uh, g women on his side. Uh, come on, no guy's going to wait two years. Uh, you know what? Drop this, Hold on. drop this girl, man. Drop her. That's what Abby says. Uh, oh, there's more. No, no, I'm just trying to check because it doesn't say anything about her having sex with this guy. Two years? She hasn't consummated the, the boyfriend-girlfriend relationship? And she's never had a one-night stand. Uh, so it seems to me if she wants to have sexual experience, why don't you have it with this guy? Why is she having 
What right. does she want a one night stand for? Well, she's not even having sex with the original boyfriend. That's my point, yes. yes. But then she wants to experience sexual freedom with other men. Yeah. But she never stand. had sex with the with the guy she supposedly loves <laughs> that she wants to live with. It's totally fucked up. It makes no sense at all. It, it sounds like the rantings of a of a, mi a of a mindless punk. She's just talking out of her ass. Doesn't make sense. She contradicts herself. All right, this is just a little update on the uh, remember the geese. Yes. Gas and the geese. Yes, it went to court. I don't know. We're going to find out. This is just a little. Oh, update. the the mayor of the town in New Jersey that wants Edgewater. to that wants to. Um, uh, uh, ban and um, gas that wants to send the geese in his town to the gas chamber. He wants to gas the geese, not just evict them, but gas the geese. Yeah, okay, go ahead. for the fourth consecutive year, Edgewater plans to kill Canada geese by placing them in gas chambers. There has been a law for decades to prevent this. But unfortunately, not all wildlife, including birds, such as Canada geese, are protected under the law. This doesn't mean they are immune from cruelty and severe suffering. No, they're not endangered, but, you know, then you have animal cruelty, too. Despite the assurances by the American Veterinary Medical Association that gassing is humane. Geese suffer greatly prior to death because the lungs of geese normally hold much more oxygen. It takes longer for them to be killed when inhaling the gas. Besides, being cruel killing is ineffectual in solving the problem. This has been seen by the four years of killing in Edgewater. Oh, they've already done this. So it's okay, you know, for these people in Edgewater, it's okay for them to look at concrete, asphalt, other humanoids, stores, buildings, telephone poles, that's okay, but to have a little nature in your life, in your town, is, is not a good thing to them. Someone put up a video last night on Facebook. Yeah. Mother duck. It was a curve. Oh yeah. Mother the, duck was on the, the curve. The ducklings were struggling. Right, they were trying to jump up on the curve. Oh, that was cute. I saw that. Guy comes along and puts a box down. They move the ducklings move over to the box. They get on the box. They get up on the curb and they go by the mama and she walks away with them. Yeah, you I just mean, help them out. That's I, I think it's nice to have to have the flora and the fauna living among us. I, I'm not saying you know that we should invite all the black bears you know, to have a bar, you know, to our barbecues or you know. But I'm saying with or coyotes, but within reason. I don't I don't see a problem with um, birds. Well, the mayor of Edgewater does. Okay. Well. He, um, maybe he's bored. Maybe he has nothing much to do in Edgewater. Um, I hear a lot of those towns, uh, a lot of the local governments in those towns that was told to me by a friend are corrupt. There's a lot, there's a lot of cronyism. As the nail sticketh to politics. There's a lot of cronyism in these uh, boroughs in New Jersey. A lot of crony, crony capitalism, capitalism going on. You know, uh, people who get cushy jobs because they happen to know the mayor, or they're yeah. related to the mayor. They get there's cushy a, there's jobs. A, there's a they politician going to jail because they, he did that with his son. They don't do shit. And they caught his ass. A guy in my neighborhood, he's having a problem. The neighbor's hedges are growing like wildfire. You know, overhanging. Into his property, and he's got to he's got to get the electric chainsaw and cut them every friggin' week. So he calls the town, he calls the town of Lodi, and they tell him, uh, "Oh, just keep on cutting them like you've been doing." Like they they didn't like 
They didn't take any action at all. Now, of course, that answer was unacceptable. Insufficient. Insufficient. Now he could he could take it to court. Yeah, I'm sure. Because he could. if the hedges are not on his property and they they're overhanging and he has to cut them, he could win this in court. But the very the answer they gave same thing with the animal control. Uh, there's nothing there. Their answer was there's nothing we can do about wildlife in the town. Well, then why are you called the uh, animal control department? Well, they sure made a law against feeding them. Leaving food out, you know, at night, I think in yeah. Lodi, it's $500 fine. Leaving food out? Well, yeah. you're just encouraging yeah. more to come. So uh, they can make uh, a law against yeah. it, so why can't they uh, help out? I had, I had a possum, uh, when I had the old garbage cans, I had a possum that just decided to sleep in one of my garbage cans um, and uh, was very comfortable all day long wouldn't come out no matter what I did refused to come out uh, and they, they said uh, make sure the garbage cans are sufficiently covered with a good lid which it wasn't because it was an old can didn't have the lid make sure the garbage can is not near any object where the animal could jump up on it and get into the can, uh, pail blah 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 or any reason not to, to show up you know and stay in their office so um, same thing with state employees same thing with people that work case workers that work for welfare you know but anyway back to the geese back to the geese this has been seen by the four years of killing in Edgewater. It doesn't work. Killing provides a void that soon will be filled by other geese. It is the habitat that attracts the geese that must be changed. Right. Eliminate that attraction and you will eliminate the geese. Many municipalities have succeeded in doing just that. Why must Edgewater continue to choose killing with taxpayers' money? Officials should consult with other communities that have successfully used non-lethal ways to control the geese. If geese are killed this year, more will need to be killed next year. Very intelligent answer. I agree 100%. Eliminate the habitat. Get to the source of the problem. And they, they will move on to a new habitat somewhere else. Is that like the... What is it? The fish stinks from the head? Something it's like that. It's probably an old proverb. Old, yeah, it's an old saying. Well, look. I think Corleone used it. No. Let, let's look at uh, um, let's look at vermin. Uh, um, let's look at pestilence, uh, rats, mice. Pestilence and smiting. Cockroaches. Um, you know, they're uh, they only stick around if if there's something for them to eat. Ah. If there's something for them to eat, it's usually in the form of, uh, of a leftover or rotted, rotted garbage related food that, you know, people do not adequately uh, put out yeah. to the curb. In other words, if, if the animal can get at the food, they have no reason to move on. They'll stay there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, the, the more the more they have access to it, the more they will they will remain and flourish, propagate. Um, you know, it's uh, originally these creatures were not pestilence. I mean, the, the the mouse was originally in the wild as the field mice. The rats were originally the Nor the Norwegian brown rat which stowed away on, mm -hmm. on cargo ships coming to the New World. And um, the cockroach that is invasive and likes to stay in, in the house and creep you out, that's uh. the, the German cockroach. They, oh, yes. 
they they're invasive. They they, they um, reproduce rapidly, and and they're not an outdoor. You know, they, they like to they like to to go where there's warm, um, damp areas, and uh, they're attracted to grease and you know sloppy people that don't clean and disinfect their uh, their kitchens. So that's that. You know what I mean? Um, just like if they keep on building homes um, in uh, rural areas near mountains and lakes, greedy real estate companies want to keep on building homes in their territory, but then they get upset when the black bears and the coyotes or a mountain lion comes into their onto their property and knocks the garbage cans over. They get people get mad. They get upset. Hey. You, you are, these animals were there thousands of years before humans started to populate their land, colonize their land. You're, you're invading their land, okay? They're not invading yours, you know? Um, and that's that. Anyway, listen, this Tuesday, the grand finale of Super Tuesdays, make sure you vote. Number one. Number two, video the, the voting, announce the location of the voting, and if there's any funny business going on, put it on YouTube. We'll see ya. Bye bye. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.